Well, good morning. If you're watching that little blip, that you know that we have a uh, divine mandate for 2015 to focus on love all year round. So that's what we're doing. We're in a series called Love Does. If you are following uh, with us as a church, picking up a daily Bible study here, you can uh, get on your way out. There's a few left for this month. We'll have uh, new ones each month. There are several hundred people who are doing this. You'll notice that today uh, is the day, a, a new week, and the theme verse is from John. And it says, I'm giving you a new commandment, a fresh commandment. I want you to love people as I love people, God says. So this is what we're doing, and this is our theme Today I would like to focus with you on one of the greatest things that love does, and it's called encouragement. Encouragement. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 5. I want to read these verses, make a couple of comments, and then talk to you about what love does. Once again, encouragement. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4 goes something like this. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and God of all comfort. Now, the word there in the original means encouragement. The God is the one who encourages us. Now, in verse 1, I want you to note that God is the source of all of our encouragement. And encouragement brings hope to us. That doesn't mean that you just stand there and he fills you with hope. He will direct your lives and lead you to the various places where you need to be so that you can receive the encouragement that he has made available to you. Verse 4 goes on and says, He comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort that we ourselves have received. Now notice that there are two different types of people there. There are those who need encouragement and those who, once they receive encouragement, they then give encouragement. Some of you may be here today and you are discouraged and you need to be encouraged. God's got a word for you, okay? But there are others who you, you are doing okay, you need to be encouraging others. Wherever you are at, God says our destiny is to get through our troubled times, receive the encouragement of the Lord, and become encouragers. Barnabas was a man in the New Testament and he says he was the son of encouragement. We are to be encouragers. Verse 5 goes on to say, for just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. Jesus, one of the great things about Jesus, he's a straight shooter. He tells his disciples that they're going to have troubles. There's going to be sufferings. Paul alludes to it here. He says, for just as we share abundantly in his sufferings, there's going to be problems. Jesus himself says, in the world you're going to have tribulation. People aren't going to like you. They're going to hate you, strong term. But he always goes on to give an encouraging word. Yes, in the world you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. See, that's the encouraging part. So every time you find that God speaks to his disciples and to us, he, does, he, he doesn't uh, mince words. He, tell, he shoots straight with you. There's going to be difficulties, but there's always an encouraging word there. Uh, I, the word encouragement means to uplift to instill hope, to implore someone, to build someone up, to edify, to strengthen. It's not a term that just means to make someone feel good about themselves and to feel better about themselves. It's actually a directive term. It does something in their life to get them back on their feet and moving again. It actually it comes from uh, a Latin word and the prefix means to put into something and the core word of, of, of uh, encouragement is is. Courage, so it means to put into someone courage. There are certain things in our life that, that drain, drains our hope and drains our courage. Uh, if you're taking notes, there are three needs that we have. We, we are created spirit, soul, and body, and our spirit needs the presence of the Lord. Without the presence of the Lord, our spirits cannot thrive. We cannot have an ongoing, vital, uh, valuable relationship with Jesus Christ without his presence. But we also have a body and a soul, and our bodies need health, and our soul needs hope. How many of you would agree with me that you can have all the money in the world, and you can be on the best vacation ever, but if you're sick, it doesn't matter? 
I mean, if, if you're sick, that happened to me when we were in Hawaii one year, uh, about a decade ago. We were on a cruise, and we came to the big island, and, and uh, I was so sick, I was on the, on the cruise, they stopped at the various islands. And all I could do is look out the window and see the island and say, have a good time, Donna, because I couldn't go. See, when you're sick, nothing matters. Everything's terrible. When I was in India, we just prayed for India. I was there a year ago. I was in a little room that was dusty and dirty, and lights would go on and off. There was no air conditioning. It was just, I had uh, over 100 degree uh, fever. It felt like it was 105. I didn't have a thermostat. Donna just said I was burning up, uh, sick for three days. I'm telling you, everything stops when you're sick. Now write this down. Health is to the body what hope is to the soul. See, the soul needs an infusion of encouragement because we lose hope every once in a while. We, we, we get discouraged every once in a while. And when discouragement comes, it's very, very real. I want to make sure I'm in the right place. Has anybody been discouraged before? Okay, there's about 13 to 14 of maybe 15 to 20 of, of us. I think all of us have experienced discouragement. It happens sometimes, and it comes in a variety of ways. You, it sneaks up on you at times. Sometimes it happens through a disappointment. Sometimes you get delayed. Things aren't happening as quickly as you'd like them to. Sometimes life is just tiring, and when life gets tiring, it opens the door for discouragement. Sometimes you're struggling with sin. I know I struggle with overcoming certain tendencies that I have because I want to be like Jesus. You know, I, I, I want to deal with not just some of my sins. I want all of my, I want to look more and more like him all the time. And I tell you, that gets frustrating at times because I'm not making as much progress as I would like to at times. So I get discouraged. Sometimes my family members are struggling with things and I hurt for them and I get discouraged because I don't know what to say. At times when, you're, when your health is failing or when your school is difficult, or when you can't pay the bills, those doors open to this thing called discouragement when a friend leaves. And there's so many other ways that we can get discouraged. But when the doors open and it comes in and we let it come in, I tell you, it's like a thief. It steals your joy. It steals your peace. It steals your contentment. And it just, just steals all of your zeal, your vitality. There's something real about that. Now listen, if you're in a time of disappointment right now, and if you're not, you will go through times of, of uh, discouragement. But if you're in, in a time uh, of discouragement right now, I want to tell you you're in good company. Because I've never read, I've read through the Bible a number of times, and all of the characters that I've come across, they've all experienced discouragement. You don't let any person tell you that if you were really a good, strong Christian, you'd always be happy. You know, I get a little leery of people who always have this euphoric smile on their face. Oh, yeah, God's good. Yeah, praise God. You know, it's, you know it, it does, it's just not like that. Life goes up and down. If you have a straight line on the monitor, you're dead. It goes up and down. You've got to go up and down. David was depressed. Psalms uh, 6, he says, oh, my soul in deep anguish, how long will this last? You ever said that? How long is this going to go on? Jonah, man, it says, it says in Jonah 2, 2, 2, he said, in my distress, if that's in my discouragement, in my depression, I called to God and he heard me. Elijah, you may remember him. He's an old time prophet, chapter 19. He does great things and he's out in the middle of nowhere, sitting under a tree and he wants to die. He's, he's actually saying, God, take my life. I don't want to live anymore. He's on the, he's on the verge of suicide. Very real. Peter, he, he got discouraged. Once he didn't stand up for Jesus, the uh, rooster crowed three times. He recognized what he had done, and it says he went out and he wept bitterly. Judas, he wept bitterly too. He, was, he, he wanted to change things. After he realized what he did by betraying Jesus, he went back to give the money back. But he was so depressed that he gave in to suicide and killed himself. See, most of the characters in the Bible that are following God, they bounced back from discouragement and depression. But Judas never did, and others never did. Why? Because they couldn't find the antidote called encouragement. And when you get bit by something, you better have an antidote. And when something of a trial comes your way and my way, I better know where the antidote is and how to get that antidote into me. And encouragement is the one thing that God uses to stimulate hope. 
Now listen, I, I know today that uh, many of us uh, face discouragement. If we don't deal with it, and you can write this down, I think it's a good, good uh, kind of a process to remember. If we don't deal with discouragement, it'll turn into depression. If we don't deal with depression, it'll turn into despair. And if we, if we don't deal with despair, it'll turn into destruction. We'll be, begin to devour ourselves without the antidote called encouragement. Now, I want you to hear me now. If you're on an antidepressant, if you're under medical supervision, I, I have no problems with that. God doesn't have any problems with that. But aren't you thankful for doctors? You know, I, I, I'm on ongoing blood, uh, high blood pressure medication. Some people may think, well, if you really trusted God, you'd be all. I don't, I don't believe that for, for a moment. God uses doctors, and he gives us those types of things. But I don't want us to forget that God is the source of our encouragement. And yes, we may at times need a medication, but there is something called encouragement that God count, that gives to us because he's the author of encouragement. He's the source of encouragement. As we read, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. He's the source of encouragement. So we call him and say, God, you are able. And that's what we said. Our lungs are filled with praise. And so I praise him. What do I say? I say, God, you're able to turn night into day. God, I believe that you can turn darkness into light. I believe you can take someone who's crying and weary and give them a mantle of praise. You can reverse things. That's what I begin to praise. And as I do that, all of a sudden, God begins to fill me with his spirit, and I experience this thing, discouragement, uh, encouragement. Discouragement's very real. You know when you're discouraged, and you also know when you're encouraged. I talked to a young man three weeks ago. He came down after me. He says, Pastor, he says, I've only met him once. Very nice guy, pilot in the military. He said to talk to me about some of his struggles in his marriage uh, three weeks ago. And uh, he says, you won't believe what's happened. He says, man, when we met, we met for a coffee at Panera's, he says, he says, the Lord through you just encouraged me and everything has changed. It looks so dismal. My wife wanted to leave me. And for some reason, we don't even know how to uh, put it into words. She changed her mind and we're now back in the same house together and we're moving together. She was here in church today. I mean, that's, see, see, that intercepts that discouragement, that process, and God can then turn things around and make the enemy's worst his best. So how can we get, experience, uh, get encouragement? Let me just list five things for you that are very, very meaningful to me. Number one, you have to start with yourself. You start to encourage yourself. It, do, it has to do with your self-talk. Stop beating yourself up. Stop talking to you about all the negative stuff. Stop talking about, I mean, I, 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 I'm a king at it. If you want some pointers on how to beat yourself up, I know how to do it. You know, and, and, and I, I, have to, I just have to stop that. It says in 1 Samuel 30 that David was greatly distressed. That means he was, he was discouraged. He was despondent. He was getting depressed. It says, for the people spoke of stoning him. I haven't heard of any of you, any of you who want to kill me. Some of you may want me to leave. I don't know, but at least you don't want to kill me. Because of all the people's who were bitter in soul, each for his sons and daughters, but David strengthened himself. But David encouraged himself. That's the Old Testament Hebrew word for he strengthened, he encouraged himself in the Lord. How do you encourage yourself in the Lord? Well, you have to look at the book of Psalms because he wrote most of the Psalms. And there's a pattern that you begin to see. First of all, you'll notice in his Psalms, and this is why I love to read them, he's very honest. He, 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 he's, he's honest with God. Hey, God, I mean, I, I know that you say you are this, but I'm hurting right now. How long is this going to go on? He's honest with God. But he, he's not just honest about his feelings. He's focused on the truth about God. Sometimes you can think that, that you, you believe the truth, but it's just your feelings that are speaking. So many times in the Psalms, you'll notice a pattern. He'll start off when you start in verse 1 and verse 2, the first few verses of many of his Psalms, and it'll be, God, you're great. I praise you, Lord. You're everlasting. You have all power. And then all of a sudden, then it'll di start to digress. But God, I'm miserable, and things aren't working out, and everybody's against me. I don't know what to do. It's pretty dark down here. Can you help me? And all of a sudden, he'll build back up again by the end of the psalm, and he'll be again praising God. See, at some point, you and I have to practice, if we're going to encourage yourself, Philippians 4.8. Focus on those things that are true. 
Think on those things that are good. Start to say, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get around people who are discouraging all the time. I'm not going to read things that are discouraging. I'm going to focus on the truth because see, the truth will really set you free. It is a lot better than a lie. It may hurt for a season, but it will help you in the end. Always start with yourself. My wife's dad uh, passed away in his 40s of a really very, very rare disease. And he had to give himself a shot. And many of you who are uh, diabetics uh, know what it's like to give yourself a shot. But he would have to give himself a shot several times a day. And it wasn't just with these fine needles. It was a very thick needle. And his wife, Frankie, Donna's mom, who's now since passed away and uh, is with the Lord, she would give him shots when she was there. But there were times when she wasn't there, and Donna, being a little young kid, she, she couldn't ever get herself to give shots uh, to him because it was, it was too terrifying for her. So he would have to give himself a shot. See, you are responsible. I am responsible for my life. And I have to say, I'm going to put truth in me, and I'm going to do what I can do, first of all, to encourage myself. Second of all, you've got to check out your eating and your sleeping patterns. I liked Elijah. We mentioned him a few moments ago. He was depressed in 1 Kings 19, uh, 4 and 5. It says, it says he wanted to die, but then he went to sleep, and the angel touched him and gave him something to eat. Sometimes our depression comes and our discouragement comes because we just got too much on our plate. Oh, we don't have enough on our plate. Some people are doing absolutely nothing. No wonder you're getting discouraged. You're not experiencing your purpose that God created you for. Then there's others who are doing so many busy things that are good things, but you're so caught up in that you become overwhelmed because you have a million things and I have, don't have enough time to do it. At least that's the way you feel. But God's given everyone 24 hours a day. We have plenty of time to do everything he wants us to do, maybe not everything that we want to do. Sometimes depression leads just by making some changes in your eating habits and in your sleeping habits and in your activities. Third thing, always look for truth when you're depressed because truth really will set you free. Uh, 1 Kings 19, uh, Elijah is in a cave. He's sad, he's discouraged, depressed. God says, what are you doing here? And he says this, well, I've been serving you and I've been tired. I've given and given and given and no one else is helping. Everybody else is gone. I'm the only one left. See, he thinks that that's true, but that's not true. The truth is, God says, no, 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 Elijah, come on, embrace the truth. You're not the only one. There's 7,000 at least that haven't bowed down to Baal. Sometimes you can get depressed because you think you're the only one who's wrestling with st stuff. You're not the only one wrestling with stuff. All of us have certain things that we have to overcome. Fourth, the Holy Spirit. Call on the name of God. Call on the Holy Spirit. When Jesus ascended into heaven, he said in John 14, 26, uh, excuse me, 14, 16, he said this, I'm going to ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells in you and will be in you. The word there that he talks about sending another is the word paraclete, the same word that's used in Corinthians that we read a few moments ago that has to do with the, he's the source of all comfort. It's, he's the one who comes alongside Jesus came to reveal God to us. Jesus is God revealed in flesh. When he ascended, he says, I'm going to come back. He put it in these terms. I'm going to send you another. He says, I'm going to come back, the same one, me, I'm going to come back in different form called the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to not just be with you, I'm going to be in you. And if you will call out to the Holy Spirit, he will guide you to the place. He will help you Find what you need to find so that you can be encouraged and overcome this pattern of decline and destruction. When you receive Jesus as your Savior, when you say, God, I don't want to live my life alone. I want to let you tell me what to do. I want you to be my leader. Please forgive me my sins. Please save me from my past. Please help me in my present. 
Please, when I die, take me home to be with you. When you pray that prayer, you experience what they call a new birth. You experience salvation. You have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And as you begin to grow in your salvation, you begin to get awakened to the works of the Holy Spirit that he's made available to you for your encouragement. One of those gifts, and several of them are listed throughout the Bible, 1 Corinthians 12, one of them is a spiritual language. I use that virtually every day. It may not be every straight day, but virtually every day I will use that spiritual language, a language God gives us from our heart, not our mind. 1 Corinthians 14 says, when you use that spiritual language, it edifies you, it encourages you, it builds you up. So I use that frequently. There's another gift called prophecy. And when I read the Bible uh, and I say, Holy Spirit, I don't want to just read the book today. I want to read the love letter that you sent to me. Would you lead me to the place that I'm supposed to read? I need some help today. I'm discouraged. Where should I read? And I start to read the Bible, and all of a sudden, because I've opened, asked the Holy Spirit to help me, he lead me to a passage that all of a sudden, wow, it comes alive. Any of you have ever had that happen to you? It's kind of like it just jumps off the page, says, this is for you. It makes things alive. That's that gift of prophecy that's at work because you've asked the Holy Spirit. I've had times of discouragement where I wanted to throw in the towel. I said, Holy Spirit, please help me. And all of a sudden, a gift of faith would rise up. And I don't know why or how it was just there. I all of a sudden, I believe this is going to be okay. We're in some transitions right now on staff, and as I was listening to these guys and, and gals leading worship today, I, I said, I said, everything's going to be okay. God's going to take care of it. There's a spirit of faith that begins to rise up. When you ask the Holy Spirit, he has gifts of discernment. He has gifts of wisdom that are available. He will show you where to go, what to do, how to receive whatever you need to receive. Oh, I, I can't under estimate the, I don't want you to underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit. We, I cry out on a regular basis for God to reveal his son to us, Jesus, and save people. And Holy Spirit's the Holy Spirit's the one in us who makes us alive to that. And the last thing that I want to share with you uh, comes from Hebrews 10, uh, 24 and 25. And it has to do with gathering with others. Gathering with others. Because there's nothing like being encouraged uh, when you're gathering with others. I would hope, uh, I would hope every Sunday, if you, can't, if you come and you give an hour, an hour and a half of your time, I would like to think you'd go away encouraged. I would hope to think that God can use us to, to speak a word, to impart to you something that would strengthen you and help you, give you insight and give you direction. That's what a gathering is all about. Hebrews 10, 24 says, let us consider how we may spur one another on to love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together. See, some people don't see a need for meeting together on a regular basis. I personally do, and obviously you do or you wouldn't be here. Don't, don't give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. You see, that's when you get together with people, there's encouragement that happens. I don't know if you're a part of a journey group. You don't have to feel bad if, badly if you're not, but I'll tell you that they're powerful when they work. Uh, I am so thankful for the group that meets in my home on Thursday nights. Several couples come and, and uh, join me, and we, we have a great time talking about our times of discouragement and how, in, how God in, encouraged us. And one of the gals said, you know, just a, uh, last year I had a miscarriage and I was trying to keep, I was trying to, I was really discouraged and it was our first child and, and uh, I, I was trying to keep it all inside. But then one day I just shared with another sister. And then we got it together in a group and we started sharing. And I found out, oh man, there's several women who have had miscarriages and what they said and just, just having the, the ability to share what's going on inside is encouraging in itself. Even if there are no fixes to, to the uh, problems that you're, you're facing. There's something about sharing with each other. Oh, one of the guys uh, said, I was having some <coughs> financial difficulties not too long ago, and I was in church, and someone came up to me. I had never met them before. They had never met me. They just looked at me, and they said, said, are you struggling in your financial realm? 
And uh, they, he said, well, yes. And she, this person said, well, I have a scripture for you. Here's what God said. And that scripture just hit it on the head of the nail right where he was at. It encouraged, didn't solve his problems, but encouraged him so that he had hope again. See, it's, it's I don't know how, I, there's so many ways to encourage people, just writing a letter, making a call, having a visit, uh, it's just so many things. I, I took off last week to celebrate my 64th uh, birthday and our 42nd anniversary. Didn't want to really drive to the coast, uh, so too, too far to drive, so we, we just, uh, Went to, to uh, Harris Ranch. Harris Ranch uh, is just about 35 minutes away. We had been there f to eat in times past, but never to stay. And so I got a nice room and uh, took Sunday night and, and Monday off. Uh, as we were having dinner, I saw uh, Brad Reynolds, who is the assistant general manager the, uh, of uh, Harris Ranch. I've known him for a number of years. We caught up because we haven't seen each other uh, for a long, long time. Found out how his wife was doing and all those things. And the, uh, on Tuesday, when we started to check out, she said, well, well uh, your room has been comped for one night. And I thought, wow, who did that? And I reckon, realized, oh, yeah, it was, it was Brad, because he, he's able to do that. So I found him, and I said, man, that's very encouraging. I hope you didn't feel any pressure to have to do that, just because we haven't, you know, I, I always go through that routine, because I, I have enough pride that I don't like to receive things from people. But anyway, it was, that's a great blessing. That's encouraging. I wasn't even depressed, and I'm getting encouraged, <laughs> you know? How do you, do, how, did, how do you just, how do you encourage people? Well, first of all, you have to go through some difficult times and receive the comfort and the encouragement of the Lord. Because once you go through a tough time, see, see, I, I used to think that my main purpose in life was to avoid all problems. Just, just, I don't, I don't want to have any difficulties. If I could just get to a place where I'm totally secure, got enough money in the bank so I can just kick back and rest. I got all, everything's fine. See, see that was my, my goal, and that's not the way it is. You know, you can't grow unless you go through those difficult times. And when you go through these difficult, depressing, discouraging times, when you receive comfort and encouragement, then you have something to give away. I like what uh, the message says here. In verse 4 of 2 uh, Corinthians 1, it says this, He comes alongside us, this is God. He comes alongside us when we go through hard times, and before you know it, he brings us along someone else's side who is going through hard times. That we can be there for that person just as God was there for us. That's what love does. Love says, you know, I may be right now in a period of discouragement, but when I get encouraged, I want to love people that way. Because love is a verb. Love is active. Love does something. And one of the things that we're talking about today is love encourages people. I want to be an encourager. When I go away for a week, I want my staff to miss me. I don't want them to say, thank God he's gone. You know, I, I want them to genuinely, you know, desire to have me back. You know, I don't want to be around people who only have one button on the elevator and that's down. You know, if you're in the cellar digging holes, you know, no one wants to get around you. You know I mean? We, you know, I want to get around you to help you out, but if you're intent on staying in the cellar, you know I mean? I don't know how to help you. I'm in the cellar building a, a, a ladder so that I can get out of it. And that's what we are called to do, is to help people who are buried with overwhelmed in things. We're called to help them out because life gets difficult at times. I want to, I want to close uh, with a quote that I just read by a guy named William Arthur Ward. He says this, Flatter me, and I may not believe you. Criticize me, and I may not like you. Ignore me, and I may not forgive you. Encourage me, and I will not forget you. Do you want to be remembered as a person who helps people, who loves people, well, love does encouragement. I pray that you would be encouraged. At two o'clock last night, I woke up and the Lord said, I want, to, I want to reverse the tide for people who are in the midst of discouragement. So I'm going to invite...
those of you who uh, are in a season of discouragement. I already have addressed the fact, and you know that some of you aren't there, but some of you are, are there, and I believe God, I don't know what he will do. I don't know if it'll happen instantly or if it'll be gradual, but I do, do know something. Something's gonna turn today. The, the, the enemy wants to destroy you. He does not want you to get back on your feet. He wants you to quit. He wants you to give up. And he, God wants to take the enemy's worst and make it his best. So I'm going to invite you to pray. Come down. Some of you experienced sickness. Uh, I've been praying. I, uh, what woke me up at 2 o'clock, I know it was the Lord, but it was my concern for Jonah, one of the girls on staff. She's uh, fighting again with an infection that's very, very, very serious in her leg. And it went away, but it's come back again now. And she's lost a number of days uh, working, and I'm concerned. So I called her this morning. I said, would you mind if I, I share that? Because I think you represent people who are discouraged because it just keeps coming back. And there may be some of you who need a physical touch today, and I want to include that in my prayer as, as, as you come down, okay, today so that God can reverse that, so that, so that he can encourage you and get you back into a place where you have hope and you have a sense of purpose. So don't be embarrassed. If, if you're in this season of discouragement, come on down. Let us, let us pray for you. I've asked the team to sing that new song that they've taught us. So let's stand and let's sing that together. And after they get done, I'm just going to have a word of prayer and believe. Now listen, when you come down, okay, just make your way right now, okay? If, if that's you, just make your way. If there's just a few, that's fine. One or two, if there's a, several of you, that's okay too. Just come down if you're in this season. I, I don't want you to just, just, just wait for him to do something. Let, let him fill your lungs with praise start to start to acknowledge the truth about god just speak honestly to him tell him how you feel right now just be honest with him god i'm in the pits i i just can't see the end i i see the light at another the end of the tunnel but i see another tunnel coming up god there doesn't seem to be any any let up i've got to call out to you today god i need you be honest with him today be honest. What, what you will do is you will open the door for him to encourage you. That's what's going to happen in the next few moments. It's going to start something that will turn, will turn the tide of the enemy in the next few weeks for you. Let's begin to sing this together and let the Holy Spirit do his ministry. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You are Restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. Just worship him now. Those are down front, just begin to worship the Lord. Just worship him. who are down front as if you're opening yourself to God. Lord, we lift our hands to you as a sign of our openness. Our declaration to you is that we need you. We, we can't make it without you. Our spirits, we need your presence. 
our bodies, we need health. Wherever there's sickness, Jesus, today, I pray that you would visit people. Some are not even able to be here. They're at home. Jonah's at home. Others are at home. Maybe they're watching on the online set. Visit them right now, Jesus. Bring healing. If there are those here today who are discouraged because of the ongoing chronic pain, I pray there'll be a reversal in that today. A reversal. I speak healing. You said in one of the songs, we sing that the bones will sing again. God, restore our bones, restore our bodies. Oh, God, bring hope to those who are here. For those who are discouraged, something's happened, some hurt has taken place. We call on you today, Lord, and believe that, that the enemy has attempted to destroy those people, these who are stand before you, many of them, but you have set yourself to take his destructive ways and turn them around to develop and shape and make them into someone who's stronger than ever before. Turn the enemy's tables, Lord. He wants to devour and destroy, and you want to develop and shape and encourage. And so I pray, Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, that the Spirit of the living God will begin to breathe upon us. And the clouds that keep us from seeing the sun would begin to remove themselves so that it would shine brightly again. Lord, lead my brothers and sisters as they have their hands up. Lead them to where they need to be the scriptures that they need to read, the people that they need to see, the things that they need to do, the places that they need to frequent so that your encouraging word can infuse them with strength again. I pray all of this knowing full well that I have no power at all to create it, but you have all power and all authority. And when you say something, it happens. When you speak to the dark clouds and say, be gone, they have to leave. When there's a storm that's, that's raging and you say, be calm, it has to calm down. And I pray, oh God, today, discouragement, be gone. Depression, be broken. Despair, get out of here. Destruction, you will not happen. It will not take place. We declare these things in the name of Jesus. Praise your name. And everybody said, amen, amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. The verse that's in your bulletin that's right up the top, it says this, therefore encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. You know, we are trying to be an encouraging family and you are doing a great job, but let's continue to do that. Let's look and see. I challenged our journey group. I said, before we meet again, let's start looking for people who have a downcast countenance because sometimes you can tell about what's going on by the external countenance. I said, let's look for people who need encouragement. Let's step out in faith and ask them if there's going through something that maybe we could pray with them, or maybe we would have a prophetic word, or maybe God would give us, give us a scripture for them. Let's come back to our group next week and let's share how we've tried to encourage people. That's what we're all about. And if you're discouraged here today, God's gonna encourage you who are down here. You know why he does that? So that you can, in fact, go and encourage someone else. That's why he wants to do that. Andrew. You know, before you guys go back down, I just want to, what Pastor Tim said is, is so right on. And one of the things that I saw is, is that uh, when you're dealing with discouragement, when you're dealing with anxiety, it's, it's oftentimes on two planes. There's a natural plane and there's a spiritual plane. And oftentimes we act in the natural plane alone. We forget about the spiritual plane or we only act in the spiritual plane. We don't, and we forget about the natural plane. And I just want to remind you that it's both. Yes. Okay, and so uh, just a moment ago, he, he prayed against a spirit of discouragement. Some of you are dealing with a, a stronghold, a spiritual stronghold, that uh, when you get discouraged, it's not just what you're <coughs> eating, it's not just what, it, whether you slept or not, it's, there's, there's actually a spiritual stronghold that you have allowed to come in or for whatever reason is there. And I saw it almost like a snake that has been wrapped around you and con imagine a boa constrictor that wraps around you and it begins to squeeze the breath out of your lungs and some of you physically felt like that that's what a panic attack feels like that you can't breathe anymore and you need to recognize that's a spiritual thing and not only a natural thing and so when that begins to happen and discouragement begins to happen you begin to declare right i am a child of god Spirit, you have no power here in the name of Jesus, and you take authority over that. 
Sing one more time, just the chorus. Can you do the chorus just for us? And then you'll be dismissed. It's your so, breath. It's your breath.